Overriding the toString function can be very helpful in many circumstances. So let's have a look first and see what it is. If you have an int age equals 23 and we print out to the console age dot to string, you can see that it converts a numeric value of this instance to its equivalent string representation. So if we run that, we shouldn't see any difference to the console because it's going to register as a string anyway. But the main point here is this function is used to be able to convert something to a string. So now let's say we had a class person. It just has a basic name and age, and then we have a constructor that takes in the name and the age and then reads it in. If you're unsure what a class is and how they work, you can press the banner above and watch the video. So now that we've got this basic class set up, let's say we actually want to print out name and age. What are our options? We can have the fact that this is a getter and this is also a getter. So we can do person.name and person.age to return back the values. So let's try that out. So we can say person, person equals new person, ABBA for the name and 23 for the age. Now that we've got that, we can have a console write line and we can say string interpolation, your name is, and then we can say person.name and say, and your age is person.age. There we go. So now if we run the code, let's have a look. Your name is ABBA and your age is 23. Perfect. So now every time we want to be able to use this, we'd have to copy and paste this somewhere else and actually make use of it somewhere else in our code. And obviously this is J duplication. So the best thing to do in this case is see if we can write a function to be able to do this. So we have two options. We can say static string print person. And since this function knows nothing about the person object, we're going to have to print it inside here. So we can say person person for the parameter. And then we can actually take this, place it straight inside here and place a return right before it and a semicolon at the end. So now what we can do instead is take this away and say print person and then place our person inside the brackets. And now we can actually reuse this somewhere else, just like in here, in different parts of our code, when we have no duplication, and we can change it once here, and it'll affect both of these calls. So if we run it again, there we go. But of course, the problem with this is, we're trying to print a person, and it's outside of the class. And the whole point of class is to be able to wrap around lots of functionality. So what you could do instead, is actually make a public string print person. And then you don't need to actually pass anything, because the person that is in effect is actually the variables that are up here. So we can actually take this line now. And instead of having person.name and person.age, we just simply have name and age since they're all local variables that are inside the class. So now what we can do instead of having print person, we can have another console write line that says person dot and then print person. And then we open and close the brackets since there's no parameters. Now if we run the code, we should see the same output. Perfect. So now what if you wanted to print a person, but you wanted to do it exactly how you'd print out an age? You simply just put age inside the brackets and this will work just fine. Age of 23 comes up. Let's see what happens if you try and print person straight to the screen. Person, and let's try and run it. And it just says to string dot program plus person. And what that means is to string is the name of our namespace. Program is the name of our class and person is the name of the class. This is pointless because this literally means nothing to the user. So what we can do is add another function in here. So we're going to introduce something called overriding. So we can actually do person dot to string. And let's run it now. And you see that that basically gives you the same data. Running person inside a console write line or running person dot to string is actually doing exactly the same thing. So what we can do instead inside here, we can actually override what this value gives us. So we can say public since you want to use it down here. And then we can use override. As soon as we type override and press space, you can see we can override these three values. Today we're going to be focusing on two string. So if we double click on that, that's going to return as the base dot two string, which is exactly what we just saw, which is pointless. So we want to return something else. And you see that the return value is indeed a string. So we can actually take this line and put it straight into here. Now, if you run the code, you can see that now this line works perfectly. And just to demonstrate this, if we duplicate this and remove the two string, by the way, you can duplicate using control D, just click on the line and press control D, remove the extra brackets. And if we print person on itself, then you see it gets printed as well. These two lines are doing exactly the same thing. If you don't specify the two string, it will essentially be using this overload behind the scenes. You just won't be able to see it. So you can very easily just print person exactly how you print the age as we showed before. You can simply print person exactly how we print age. We can say int age equals 23 and then do a console write line with age simply in the brackets. And that's all you'll need to do. 
my suggestion would be to not have a print function. If you're going to have a print function, then just override the two string. If you have multiple bits of data that you want to be printing and you want them all to be separate, then that's fair enough. But if you're only going to have a complete overview of all the parameters inside the person, then you should override the two strings since it makes the code look a lot cleaner. So now if we actually get rid of everything else, we can comment this out. We can comment out our print person. And then the only line that we actually care about is actually this one. And this is how simple it should be. We create the person and then we simply just print it with no function calls, nothing after that. Now we run the code, we should see one output. Perfect. So just have a little recap just to sum up. You can actually make a function that can do this. You can call it print person and pass the person and use the parameters and then we can output it to the screen and then we can call this function multiple times by passing person straight inside. Or you can take this definition, put it straight inside the class and you can get rid of the parameters because you're using the local variables that are supported at the top of the class. These are known as our local variables. Once you've done that, you can use person.printPerson and it's a little bit better than having print person and then calling the parameter on it. What this means is you're actually calling the function straight on the class instance itself. This is a lot better instead of having to pass it in because you might pass in a wrong parameter inside here. So now that we've used this, it's best to use the two string. Since we know we're going to be printing a person, then this just looks a little bit odd. You want to use this line or this line to print a person to the screen. So we can use public and just before you specify the return type, you want to use override. Override lets you override the definition of the base class for the two string function. And what we want to tell it to do is we want to override the two string method and tell it to forget about its previous implementation and use our new one, which will simply be to return this string back that includes our two variables. Your name is name and your age is age. And what that means is once we've override the two string, we can make use of it just like here. We can say person dot two string, or you can actually just leave it as person since these call back the same functions at the end of the day. Keeping it as person or using dot two string doesn't make a difference. The only thing you should note is you should override it and then you can use it like this or like this. So now our code is pretty simple. We make a new person and then we simply just print it out exactly how you do with something like an integer. You simply make the integer and then print it out to the screen. I hope this video made sense. If you have any questions, jump on the Discord and ask me anything or drop a comment below and I'll be happy to help. This video was made possible by my awesome Patreons DP Unique, Tominator and Buddy Woody 9 Thank you for your continued support. I have a C-Shop Masterclass Udemy course coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and join the Discord server for exclusive discounts and promotions.